In terms of where we are going today, there are really two topics we want to talk, touch on. One is, I want to kind of finish up with just a couple of real specific things about stairs. I think Jonathan did a great job of kind of covering most of the stair stuff and rails, and he had a lot of good stuff covered last week in terms of getting going with that. There's a few things I want to look at, especially kind of multi-story stairs and spirals. Those are my two sort of things that are around the edges I want to make sure you get. And then we are going to shift gears. We are going to start taking a look at, a look at buildings in a sort of a different sense, and that is, Rather than going ahead and sort of building from the micro level out to a building, okay, where we place individual walls and doors and windows and we sort of end up with a building at the end, we're going to look at it from outside in where we're going to say, hey, what if we have a site and we have a program that says we have a certain amount of square footage we have to get in there and we need to sort of overall think about the shape and the form of the building first. How can we evaluate and look at that determine what that might look like, evaluate some different shapes with the idea that that will then use that form to tunnel in and start looking at the specific details of the doors and windows and the plumbing fixtures and things like that. So just a different approach. But this other approach is actually much more common to the way we actually do big complexes. For example, like the science and engineering quad. The shape and the form of the quad has actually been known for 10 years. You know, the fact that these buildings would have this shape and be about this height with sloped roofs that's been known for quite a while. And really, as every individual building is added, the individual insides have been fleshed out and detailed for those buildings. That's sort of a much more common way of doing it. We tend to sort of design at a macro level and then get down to the micro level, especially on like commercial projects. On house projects, it's a little bit different. That we often start small and build out. But uh, for commercial things, we tend to start from the outside in. So we're going to look at that workflow so you can be well equipped to kind of approach things that way. Okay, let me just go ahead and I'm going to look a little bit at the issue of stairs. And there's just a couple things I wanted to sort of drive home about that. I think Jonathan did a good job of talking <laughs> about sort of stairs and this whole issue of the shapes of stairs and how we can kind of customize the shapes a little bit. Let's start there just a little bit, then I'll look at a spiral stair. And then we'll start talking about multi-story stairs and how you do that in a kind of a bigger building. Okay, so you can get those together. So to do all that, let me go ahead. I'm going to create a little building just for myself to work with. And you can create a new building too if you want to and follow along. It's going to be a pretty simple building, but let's go ahead and get ourselves started. What I'm going to do is I need a building that has a couple more levels to it because I want to get to this whole issue of multi-level stairs. So level one and level two are pretty good, but I want to add level three, four, and five so I just have a little more to work with. Okay, And let's show you what that might look like. So to create more levels, what you do is you go to the uh, elevations. Choose the elevations. There's level one and level two. When I want to add more levels, what I do is I choose the level tool. And you can draw additional levels. And that will create level three, then level four, and level five. But I tend to actually do that in a much quicker way. I'll pick existing levels and just offset them a set distance. That's kind of just a really quick way of saying, you know, make another one 10 feet away. Make another one 10 feet away. So if you want to follow along and do it that way, what I'm going to do is just use the pick tool. I put an offset in here of, say, 10 feet. That's my floor to floor height. And I'll just choose that level, and it'll generate a new one. And as I generate these new levels, you'll notice that over here in the browser, the project browser, you're getting level one through level six. So we have those different levels available to us. Again, all I'm doing is giving myself a little room to work. OK, with that little bit of room to work, let's go ahead and start defining a little bit of a building for us. For example, I can put down some walls. I'll just go with some very generic walls as a starting point. I'm going to leave this building open-ended on one side so we can sort of look into it. So, oh, there's some walls. And I'll put a floor at level one and level two, just so we have some floors to work with that will connect to the stairs. And I'll do that by choosing the floor tool. I'll pick the walls. And hopefully, I'm, just, I'm going pretty fast because this shouldn't be very new to anyone. And I'll just draw that final wall since there's no, or final forage since there's no wall there to pick. So I go out to the third 
first floor view or, or the uh, 3D view, you can see that uh, we have a first floor there. These walls, let me go ahead and I'm going to tab, let me <coughs> extend them up. Right now they're that 20 feet tall. Let me say, you know, I don't really want them 20 feet tall. What I'd like to do is actually extend them up to, oh, however tall your building is. Make them a little bit taller. Okay, and finally what I want to do is I want to add another level at level two. Again, this is going to be another level so we have a target for where our stair is going to go. Again, don't worry if yours doesn't look like mine. It's really not at all important. So I'm going to go to level two. Again, I'll say a floor. I'll pick some of the walls. But for this one, I don't want to have it be the whole height. I'm going to like go <laughs> only go about halfway across the building. And again, the reason I'm doing that, I just want to create like a, like a little uh, mezzanine level or a balcony level. Just something where it'll be really easy for you to see what's going on with these stairs. So sure. Okay, so I got a really basic little thing going on there. Notice I have a little wall bleeding going on because I don't have a wall that has an outer finish on it. If it had an outer finish, we'd be great. But I just got some place for some stairs. Okay, so what we talked about last time, what Jonathan was showing, was really the notion of how we can create these different types of stairs. And the most basic method was we did this thing with run lines, where we chose stairs, we chose the bottom and the top, and we sort of stretched something out, and we got a stairway. <coughs> and that actually works out pretty well. Let's just go ahead and I'll create a very simple one. Now, on level one, if I'd like to sort of, oh, understand where level two is so I can sort of aim for it, target it, what I might want to do is e adjust its view properties to turn on something called the underlay. So I might like to see level two underlaid on level one. That's just giving me that little gray line so I can sort of see where that balcony edge is. Again, it's not critical, but it just gives me a little bit of a target so as I'm drawing, I have a sense of where I'm drawing. Again, how I got that was I say view properties. And under view properties, it's the setting right here. It's called underlay. And you can choose if you want to underlay a different level. Again, it's not physically moving it there. It's just sort of showing it through. So you have an idea of what you're shooting for. OK, and now we're ready to start uh, creating a stair. So the stair tool, oh, what can we do? There's the run lines, there's the boundary lines, and finally the riser lines. If I choose the run line method, what I can do is Start, let me zoom on up so you can see what I'm doing. As I start creating my stair, notice it's telling me based on the height difference and the number of risers I've set in my properties, I have 10 risers created, eight more remaining. I can choose to sort of run that all as a single long staircase, okay, and that would be one straight run. Or if I want to, I can sort of stop part way, maybe at about nine and nine, and then once I've stopped there, I can start placing the next leg of the stair. And this is where you have to sort of be a little bit cautious, because this is where you get yourself in trouble. Okay. As you're thinking about that next stair, if, for example, you want an L-shaped stair or a U-shaped stair, don't come right here and try to place the stair, because what happens is that's going to be the beginning of the run line for the second leg of the stair, and it'll create a little pinching point right there, because it's actually you're too close to the other one. We have to give a little breathing room so we have room to create the landing that's going to connect between those two. So as you're placing, you'll actually sort of see that there's certain snap points that come available, and as I sort of hover over here, you'll see a blue snap point or snap line that comes out indicating I'm level with or even <laughs> with that edge. If I get out to right about there, you'll see that, hey, it actually sort of highlights and indicates that's a point of interest. What that point is, that's the point where you should place the start of the run if you want to make just kind of a perfect L shape. That's really, that is the point right there where if I click and start dragging, it'll form a perfect corner. Okay, so Watch out for that as you go through and put these in there. I can kind of create the L shape like this if I want to. When I say finish my stairs, you got it. 
What's happening here, just so you sort of know what's happening, there's a couple controls. There's the little arrow control. The arrow control will flip the distance. Another thing people ask about sometimes is really, oh, it's this thing right here. That's actually a cut line. And that's determined by, you know how the floors usually, or the floor plans cut four feet above the floor? That's showing you where the four foot line is. So everything below that line is showing up solid. Everything above that line is showing up dashed. That's what's going on there. So if you're wondering why some are dashed and some are solid, it's really what's below four feet and what's above four feet. Now, in terms of working with this, the simple things that Jonathan was showing you were that you could sort of start tweaking with this and adjusting the shape. So I know he showed you the whole idea that we can edit the sketch. And if we edit the sketch, we get those boundary lines and the run lines. So we can go ahead and do things like, oh, change the boundary if we want to splay that out. Create something a little more architecturally interesting. And the stairs will adjust to that, kind of creating more of a funnel shape. Let me go ahead and get these both open so you can sort of see them. There's that. Let me do a little window tiling so we can see them both. I got too many windows. Let me just tile those two. Okay, so I get those two, and I got that little splayed shape over here. Another thing you can do, let me edit this sketch again, is we can start playing around with the riser shape. So for the risers, the risers are these little black lines. If I want to change the shape of the risers, no worries, I can do that. For example, sometimes on a grand staircase like this, we'll do something where as opposed to having just a flat riser at the bottom, we'll sort of have a nice rounded riser or an arc or something like that. It's sort of an architectural effect. I can take out that old riser and put in a new riser. That's maybe an arcing riser. Oops, got to get the right line. That's the riser line there. It's the third one. Of course, I put the straight line in there as opposed to the arc. So again, riser line. Get the arc to the endpoints. And when I finish that stair, it'll kind of create that little rounded riser at the bottom. So we could spend a lot of time playing with all the different variations on stairs. And I'm not going to belabor it, because really, you're going to really learn about stairs when you try to create the stair for your building. You know, it's, that's when you'll sort of really hit all these things. I just want you to know all these things are sort of editable in terms of the types, the treads, the materials, all that stuff's editable. But we can really kind of customize almost any shape you want. Okay, Right up to the whole landing thing, for example, oh, there's this whole thing with the landing up here. If, for example, we wanted to have a rounded landing as opposed to the square landing, again, I can edit the sketch and just change the shape of the boundary. So for example, right now that's kind of a squarish boundary at the side of the landing. If I wanted to round that off somehow, I could use this tool. It's called the fillet arc, another kind of very useful drafting tool. Filleting is kind of like trimming, but as opposed to cutting off, it creates a curve for you. So I can sort of say I would like to make that a rounded profile as opposed to a straight one right now. And when I finish that, it'll kind of create a rounded railing there instead. So we can just kind of keep on playing with that, but I just want to sort of get you, you know, as a starting point, yeah, that's enough in terms of like, uh, like knowing that you can start editing these things. But now let's go into the new stuff, and that's really like how you create these two other types of stairs. Or oh, actually, I should ask you, did Jonathan show you the, the circular stairs last time? No. Okay, let's talk about that. I thought that was going to be a newie. Here's my like a uh, straight stair or my L-shaped stair. Let's talk about a curved stair. Curved stairs are actually kind of a lot of fun. They're very architecturally significant. Everyone loves a curved stair. Um, they, look, they look dramatic. We're going to do it with a run line. In fact, for all these things, what I'm going to advocate doing is it's almost, almost oh, nine times out of 10 better for you to draw a very simple stair using the run lines and then start editing it, as opposed to trying to create it from scratch. If you just do the run line first, it'll give you the basic template of what you need to do set up. It'll all sort of hold together. And it's almost always easier to customize it from there. Okay, We're going to do a run line, but as opposed to a straight run line, we're going to do a curving run line. 
This is a something where we're going to draw the center point, and then we're going to sort of sweep an arc, which is going to indicate really where the stairs will run. Let me go ahead and zoom on in here. And what I'll do is choose this tool. So as opposed to a straight one, I will click a center point. And then I'm going to pull out to the width of the arc. And I'm going to show you two different things. I'm going to show you sort of a very wide stair. And I'm also going to show you a very narrow stair, more like a, sm a spiral stair. OK, so let's do the wide one first. This line that I'm pulling out is actually going to be the center line of the steps. So if I want to have a wide arc, I can go ahead and choose where I want it to be, pull it on out. And as I pull along the arc, you'll see that it's going to tell me how many risers are necessary. So I can create sort of a sweeping round stair that's very, very wide in terms of its arc. Let me finish it. OK, let me come back over here. Maybe orbit around a little bit so you get a better sense of what I'm looking at. Okay, kind of a nice rounded stair. Now my nice rounded stair here is like all ready to be kind of aligned with something else. If it's out of alignment and I need to move it into a place, no problem. We can sort of rotate it and move it around to get it where to where we want it to be. To do that, I might choose the stair, like I've gotten over here. And I can move it, but let me try to rotating it first. It's going to be a little hard. This is right now set up to rotate around that point. That's the center line of the object. If you want to ever change the center of rotation, you can pull on out. And I'll see if I got it. I think I'm actually pretty close right there. Maybe not. No, that's actually sort of. I'm trying to figure out where the snap point is to be the center line of that, because I want to rotate it around its center. If I'm having trouble with that, let me show you kind of a way you can do that. Every once in a while, we do this whole thing where we need to, let me say, uh, finish those stairs. That's interesting. Let's try again. Trying to guess. I don't think I'm getting it. Every once in a while, especially with round shapes, you run into this thing where you need to put uh, construction lines down just to help you try to figure out where the center of something is. So for this, I can do that a couple different ways. Often what I'll do is I'll just use detail lines. I'll choose a detail line. And I can say, I want to sort of be along, oh, this edge right here. And I want to be along that edge right there. All I'm really trying to do is basically sort of find two different lines. And if I trim those together, I'll find where the center point is of that stair. So I can then do the trim. Oh, where do I want to be? I'm under Modify. I can grab this one and that one, and it'll sort of project out to where the center line is. All I'm really trying to do is find where the center line is. That actually looks like a very strange place for the center line, but it may be. OK, choose that. I will rotate. I'm going to pull the center of rotation to be at that point. And now I can start swinging this around try and get it lined up where I want it to be. Did a very bad job there. Let's go ahead and kind of think about the correct way to do that. OK, so if I wanted to, what I'm trying to do is basically rotate that stair so the top of the stair is parallel to uh, that line right there. OK, that way we can join it nicely. So let me do it the proper way. I will choose it. I will rotate it by moving the axis of the center of the rotation about there. Now, to do something like this, the best thing to do is actually choose the surface that you want to sort of move and align to something, and then see if you can swing it around. And it'll snap to the 90 degree point there. OK. And with that selected, now I can finally just do a move and move it into place. Now, if that all just sort of seemed like a whole lot of hoo-ha just to get to there, it kind of was. But it's sort of sometimes a lot of work to kind of get them all generated and put into the right place and get rid of those lines right now. Because it's hard with curves. Curves all sort of say, you know, they're sort of architecturally interesting, but they're also architecturally challenging to kind of work with and manipulate them that way. So sometimes getting things to locate properly is a little bit of work. So now I got that thing lined up to where it wants. So basic curve, you know, a very broad curve looks like that. 
let me zoom on out and kind of do something that's a little bit tighter as a curve. And that is, we'll again go to the stair tool. And in the stair tool, again, I'll choose the radius. But this time, as opposed to being so broad, let me stay pretty close in here. Now, there actually is sort of a minimum distance. Let's talk about that. Because if we go through and we have a stairway that has to be at least three feet wide, and we're dimensioning to the center line, if you get any closer than a foot and a half, the stair is kind of doubling back on itself. Okay, so the minimum is like a foot and a half. Even three feet, you'll see, is a fairly tight stair. But I can kind of rotate it around and see if I can get all the risers created. Then I can finish it. Oops, let's take a look at that. Looks like I didn't quite get all of them that time. Again, I'll edit the sketch. See if I can pull that out further. Three more to go, two more to go, one more to go, golden. Okay, and now we have a stair that's actually spiral and almost wrapping around in itself. Now let me give you a warning about spiral stairs, and it's just sort of a limitation of the way we model. If spiral stairs can rotate up to 360 degrees, if you go more than 360 degrees, you have to have to make it out of two different sections and bring them together. Because just in terms of drawing the line, if you loop back on yourself, it doesn't know what to do. Okay, so up to 360 degrees, and then we end up having the loop. Yes? Say again? So in terms of, you know, go ahead and ask a little more detail. Because So how do I create the, the spiral stair? OK, let's go ahead and show you. We'll do that one more time. I'll take out this one. And again, what I'm going to do is say, uh, go to the stair tool. And it all starts with this arc, the center line arc. So I go through and click a point. That's the center. And then pull on out. I'm going to pull some distance, oh, two feet. That'll be a very tight stair, something like that. Click there. And if I go pulling around, you'll see I'll be creating all the different stairs. It's definitely a little confusing in terms of trying to get them to go there. So it's still four up. Actually, let me tell you what's going on here. I think I have a stair that's actually a little bit too tight right now. Because it says I have 14 risers created, but there's still four remaining. That happens sometimes. There's this whole issue of the tighter it is, the more quickly you're going to go winding around yourself, and you'll hit that 360 degree limit more quickly. So if you're just sort of too tight to make it happen, no worries. Just start over in terms of drawing it and give yourself a slightly bigger radius. OK, that's how much it would be at four feet. Let me try to see how, big, how much it would take to sort of get that height difference in three feet. So even at three feet, we're kind of OK. But if I get much smaller, it starts winding around itself. And let's talk about really what that's determined by. The length of the stair is actually determined by this. See the run line? There's a minimum run that you have to have for each of the different steps. And that we've set up being at 11 inches, because that's sort of a comfortable size for my foot to actually land and have some space to land on. If it was much tighter than that, the stair would be too short, and I'd sort of trip on it. If it was too long, I'd sort of stumble as I'm coming up. So that's actually considered the run length. So if you think about the radius and each of those stairs having to be 11 inches at that run line, okay, that's what's determining how much it's actually taking to go winding all the way around. So you can have steep stairs, but if they start getting too steep, you get to this problem where, oh, it gets very, very pinchy in there and people trip because there's just not enough to kind of actually have your toe catch on it. Okay, but again, stairs, you know, we could spend a whole two or three hours talking about stairs and all the architectural rules for stairs. I think as you start developing your projects, you'll start hitting all the different sort of variations of that and we'll start, you know, individually working through some of the specific variations you have to worry about. That's spiral stairs.